I have removed the big six from the Premier League, and not only that, I've released all their players. So, let me show you who I've replaced them with. Now, we have put teams in that have recently been in the Premier League and we feel might be able to hold their own. So, we've put West Brom, Watford, Southampton, Norwich, Leeds and Leicester all back in the Premier League. They've all played in it in the last 10 years and they all, you know, rightfully challenge for the, the championship or promotion every season. Let's have a look who's favourite to win the Premier League then. It, Realistically, you expect Newcastle to be there. They're two to five on to win it. And then you've got Villa, Brighton and West Ham making up the rest of the top four um, with Watford, Luton and Norwich all predicted to go down. I mean, Watford are a massive 450 to one to win the league. It's just not going to happen. So um, as you can see, we've got Arsenal, Chelsea, uh, Liverpool, Man City, Man United and Tottenham. And they're all in League Two. And not only that, we let go of all of their players, which means Liverpool, for example, are left with just youth players pretty much that's it i mean it still has these guys here because he's still capped in as it stands but virgil van dijk is a free agent so he isn't going to be playing there the other thing we did is we adjusted their finances and we reduced their bank balances down now we left things in place like sponsorships because over the 10 years that we're going to run this experiment for it will balance out so overall that doesn't really matter but what we want to see is who's going to start to dominate the premier league Who's going to become kings of Europe after Man City have just completed a treble last year? And which one of these teams, or which how many of these teams, can get back to the Premier League in the next 10 years? Could one of them even win the Premier League in the next 10 years? That would be an achievement considering we've released all their players. In terms of who's favourites for League 2, um, as you kind of would expect, Man United are up there 1-91 to on. Arsenal, Man City um, are also up there as well. Liverpool are predicted to finish 8th, while Tottenham are predicted to finish 6th, and Chelsea are predicted to finish uh, 12th. That is um, surprising to say the least, but uh, it'll certainly be interesting how this season unfolds. So let's get this season over with and um, we'll have a look at who went up and uh, who won the Premier League. All right, then, so our first season of the 10 season experiment we're trying here is in the books. Let's see who went up, who went down, and who won European competitions. So, Premier League wise, Newcastle are champions. 56 scored, 23 against. Really good defensively all season. By far the best defence in the league. 79 points. And relegated Watford, West Brom, and Norwich. So, three of the teams that we pushed up to the uh, Premier League got relegated. Luton surviving by a point. Southampton finishing 14th, Leicester were back at mid-table, um, Burnley finished 7th, what a season for Burnley. Now in terms of the teams that we put down into League 2, it was a mixed bag. Manchester, uh, Manchester City, Man United and Arsenal all promoted automatically, Arsenal and Man United clear of the others, Man City in 80th, uh, with 80 points in 3rd. A couple of things on that, Man United were still able to kind of attract good players, which um, surprised me uh liverpool lost in the playoff final but finished fourth tottenham and chelsea finishing mid-table pretty bang average seasons for those guys those guys the fa cup well that was won by newcastle who did a double uh, they beat leeds in the final pretty good to be fair um tottenham had the best rated player in the in the tournament um but uh, all in all it was kind of expected newcastle would win that and in the Champions League, well, Real Madrid did what Real Madrid do, and they beat PSG in the final. So, Newcastle, Premier League winners, FA Cup winners, Arsenal, City, and Man United going up to League One, while the other three stay in League Two, and Real Madrid are champions of Europe again. What's going to happen in Season 3? Let's find out. All right, the second season of this experiment's done, so let's find out what happened and uh, who did what. Newcastle won the Premier League again, and they won it at absolute canter. 19 points clear of Villa in second. Everton finished third, while Fulham went into the top four with Bournemouth going to fifth and relegated Middlesbrough, Bristol City and Stoke. So the three teams that came up last year all got relegated. Let's just have a quick look at this Newcastle team because that's pretty much... I mean, they've got James Madison, Jorginho and Joe Gomez. The rest of that starting 11 are the Newcastle starting 11. So that is pretty impressive um, by them. Uh, in terms of who scored the goals for them that's this season, Eddie Nketiah was at Villa. He got 19. Wout Weghorst, there's a blast from the past, 16 goals. Phil Foden is at Brighton. He got set uh, at the top, um, the top ratings, while James Ward-Prowse got the most assists. Bournemouth won the FA Cup, so they captured silverware, beating Derby in the final. 2-0. That's pretty impressive by Derby. Dar um, getting to the final. But Dominic Solanke getting both goals there for Bournemouth. 
and it was a repeat of last year's final with PSG and Real Madrid both getting there and it was revenge this time for PSG as they capture their first Champions League title. Um, so fair play. Declan Rice at PSG, what a free transfer he is, but what about the teams that we put in lower leagues? Well, it was the same story again in League One with the uh, winners from last season actually going straight up again. Man United, Man City and Arsenal doing a 1-2-3. Arsenal through the playoffs. Um, oh, sorry, Arsenal got the last promotion spot. So Man United 101 points. Oh, uh, City 93 and Arsenal 88. Be interesting what happens when they get to this next stage though because that is where money needs to be really managed quite well. And if they don't do it, they could start to struggle. So... Those three back in the championship, Liverpool, Spurs and Chelsea up to League One. We're only in the second season. Are we going to see an English winner of the Champions League at any time? Well, let's find out as we get on with season three. Well, then this season is in the books. Let's find out exactly what happened. Well, Premier League and Newcastle are three-time Premier League winners. Three times back to back as well. I mean, that is pretty impressive. 79 points. Again, defensively really good. There's no one team outscoring any of the others either. I mean, they all look, if you look, 61, 61, 64 at the top, which is Newcastle, Brighton and Aston Villa. That is pretty impressive. Man United have made their way back to the Premier League in just three seasons. Really impressive when you consider Man City missed out in the playoffs, while Arsenal were down in mid-table at 13th they only got 64 points and barely scored, well, didn't even score one goal a game over the course of the season. League One, Liverpool and Tottenham have been promoted, finishing at first and second, while Chelsea went up through the playoffs. So we've got five of the big six in the championship and Man Manchester United back in the Premier League. So it's looking like these four, well, these three of the five teams could be pushing to join Manchester United over the next couple of years. Newcastle won the FA Cup for the second time in three seasons. Obviously, this Newcastle team have gone from strength to strength without the top six. It does just show that that extra bit of cash that they have from their owners makes a massive difference. Meanwhile, in the Champions League, Paris Saint-Germain won it back to back, beating Atletico in the final 2-0. Now, one thing I haven't looked at in previous seasons is the Europa League and the Europa Conference League. So we'll have a look at that now. This year, Real Sociedad won it, and this is off the back of Fiorentina last season and Milan in our first year of this experiment. No English teams. It's a bit of a surprise, but maybe somebody's got the Europa Conference League in the bag. In this year's Europa Conference League, Anderlecht have won it 2 0 in the final, beating Stuttgart. Last season, however, we did have an English winner, and that was Brighton. Brighton claimed European glory, beating AEK in the final. So, so far in three seasons, we've seen Man United return to the Premier League. The other five clubs make it back to the Championship. What's going to happen to Man United when they get to the Premier League, though? Financially, they can't compete. But is the draw of the name still going to attract players? There's only one way to find out. Let's get on with the next season. Right, then season four is done. So let's see how we got on. Well, Man United qualified for the Champions League in their first season back in the Premier League. Really impressive. I mean, they've, they've really outperformed the other teams in this comp in the, this experiment um newcastle again back to back champions i think that's four in the spin now yeah so newcastle have won the league every single year with only aston villa and brighton finishing second so newcastle have just exploded into a different stratosphere to the rest of the league Wolves and Leeds and Sunderland are promoted to the Premier League. Man City finished fifth and lost in the playoffs, while Liverpool were 13th, Chelsea were 16th, Arsenal were 19th, and Tottenham were 14th. The rest of these teams have really struggled during this, and I'm surprised, to be honest, especially with Man City. Man City are supposed to have such a good youth system, and with all the youth players that Chelsea have stockpiled, again, that is quite surprising. And we only got rid of their first team, so that that is... Uh, an interesting revelation, I suppose. While in the FA Cup, Newcastle won the FA Cup for the third time in four seasons, beating West Ham 3-1 in the final. Gimaras, Isak and Abada getting the goals there. Two goals in the first, three goals in the first 10 minutes of that cup final. That that would have been exciting, I suppose, to be involved in. And in the Champions League, we were, joint, we were treated to another Real Madrid PSG final. And this time, Real Madrid came out on top 2-1. PSG in the final every single season for the last four. They've got Erling Haaland. In fairness, they did go and get some decent players once we released them. If you look, you can see them there. Diaz, uh, Rice, Odegaard, Silva, Haaland, 
Tierney. They, they've got a very, very good squad. In the Europa League, it was Roma that came out on top, beating Sporting in the final 1-0. Um, in extra time, Paolo Dybala scored in the 105th minute. In the Conference League, Valencia won that 2-1. Um, all goals in the first half an hour, so probably pretty dull after that point. But still, we've only had one English winner of Europe. While I understand that Real Madrid, PSG, Bayern Munich, they will spend, you would think Newcastle would be competing. So let's have a quick look how Newcastle have actually got on in the Champions League. So Newcastle actually got to the last round of 16 and lost 2-1 on aggregate to PSG. They lost 2-0 away from home and then beat them at St. James's Park. But they are the only... So Aston Villa also um, got through to the quarterfinals, beating Atletico in on penalties. So let's see how far they actually went. Well, their run came to an end at the quarterfinal stages. They met PSG and were smashed 6-0 on aggregate, losing 2-0 away from home and again absolutely destroyed 4-0 at home. So no real success in Europe for uh, the for the English clubs. However, Newcastle are starting to pull up trees in the league. With Man United now in the Champions League, there will be an influx of money into that club as well. So it'd be interesting to see how they spend that. But uh, hopefully we'll see more of these clubs get into the Premier League as we do the fifth season. So let's see how it goes. Right, we've reached the halfway point of this experiment. Let's see what's going on in the Premier League. We have new Premier League winners. Aston Villa um, winning the Premier League with 80 points. It's the first time in a couple of years that anybody has completely outscored the rest of the division as they've bagged 79 goals over the course of the year. Normally, they've all been around 61 to 65 goals, which is strange. Um, the big news is, though, Manchester United have been relegated along with Burnley and Nottingham Forest. Now, Burnley and Nottingham Forest have been pushing for those European places up until this season, so they've really dropped off. And Man United have dropped like a stone. Remember, they had Champions League football this season. Um, so that is a massive drop down for them. While in the championship, Stoke have won the league, 91 points, and they are just pipped. They've just pipped Man City, you've got 89. Um, both teams pretty similar, 68 goals, 44 against for Stoke, and it's 66, 45 respectively for Man City. Bristol City did well to come third, but lost in the playoffs to Middlesbrough. The other teams, again, have struggled. Tottenham and Liverpool are 14th and 15th. Arsenal and Chelsea are down 17th and 19th, battling relegation. So at some point, either these guys are just going to stay there and that's going to be their level, or one of them is going to get pushed to the Premier League. Now, Man City are there. Can they do better than Man United? They lasted two seasons be really interesting to find out. Newcastle have again won the FA Cup three times on the spin now for Newcastle. You can't really complain. Um, Marcus Rashford scoring an early penalty as they beat Nottingham Forest. Newcastle also had a good run in the Champions League as they reached the final, but they were beaten by holders Real Madrid 3-1. Uh, first time we've seen a, an English team get that far, so fair play, but it maybe has shown that those cut runs affected their league form as well. Well, in the Europa League, we have another English winner of a European competition as Everton beat Lazio in the final of the Europa League in extra time, thanks to Dominic Calvert-Lewin. And Lille won the Conference League beat in Athletic Bilbao 2-1 in extra time as well. So a mix back again for the English, for the top six. I'm going to say English teams with top six. Um, Man United need to bounce back. Obviously, they'll get parachute payments now as well. So that'll be interesting. But they have lost some of their players. A couple of their players actually went to Saudi when I looked at their transfers, so that'll be interesting. It'll also be interesting to see how Man City spend over the summer and the January window in the sixth season. So let's get on with that one and we'll see if Man City can cement their place in the Premier League and if Man United can bounce back. And what about the other clubs? Can they even get top half? Well, let's find out. And then we have another season in the bag. Let's see what happened. Well, Newcastle our champions of England once again, 81 points. Uh, defensively, the best team, I think. Bournemouth, actually, but Bournemouth weren't as good attacking. Um, Man City, who went, came up last year, they finished 15th. So they avoided relegation by five points. Stoke, Blackburn and Middlesbrough getting relegated. Newcastle, Villa, Brighton and Everton, pretty much a consistent top four, um, as well as Bournemouth, Palace. There are a reduction of Champions League places, I've noticed as well this year. So the coefficients of England teams not doing as well in Europe is starting to affect the league, which is quite interesting. Now in the Championship, 
uh, Burnley and Hull promoted automatically. Liverpool got to the playoffs, uh, finishing third. They actually finished joint points with Hull, but had a worse goal difference. Hull just outscored them. And uh, they lost in the playoffs. So Nottingham Forest won and went up through the playoffs. The other teams, again, struggled. Tottenham finished 10th. Man United are down at 14th, at one place above Arsenal. And Chelsea are really starting to flirt with relegation back to League One. And they finished 21st. That is shocking. Really, really bad for Chelsea. There's a real possibility by the end of this they could be a League One club. Possibly even lower if they really don't pick it up. Meanwhile, in the FA Cup, it is really becoming Newcastle's tournament. They've won it four times on the spin now, and they've won it five out of the six seasons we've done so far. That is pretty dominant, I would say. I mean, you look at that there. Only Bournemouth are the other team to win it, um, and they beat Leeds on penalties in the final. Meanwhile, in the Champions League, we have another English finalist, and it's not a team I expected to ever see there. It's Crystal Palace. They lost on penalties to Barcelona, so we have a new winner of the, of the, other, the European Cup. Uh, Real Madrid, PSG have won it previously and we've now got new winners. Really nice at some point to see an English team win this, obviously. But Palace reaching the final, congratulations to them, that's a big achievement. Meanwhile, in the Europa League, Napoli beat Monaco in the final. Um, so uh, we have another Italian winner of this competition, they won 2-1. And Athletic Bilbao, who lost in the final of the Europa Conference League last season to Lille, went back to the final and won it this time 2-1, beating Olympiacos. So again, a pretty good season. I mean, it's. I did wonder when we did this um, at the start whether we would see multiple teams winning the Premier League. It doesn't look like that. Newcastle have been pretty dominant. Aston Villa, the only other team to win it. Um, but it would be nice to see if that changes over the next couple of seasons. We've got four left to go. Um, and it'll definitely be interesting to see if Liverpool can get back there. Or if Man City do stay there, will they start to challenge as well? Because obviously there will be investment in them. Um, and can we get an English winner of the Champions League? We've had English winners of the Europa League and the Conference League. We just need the big one now. So let's see how we get on in the next season. And then under the season done, let's find out exactly how things went. So in the Premier League, we have a new champion. Brighton have captured the Premier League title, uh, getting 88 points. Newcastle finished second, 87. Both of those two teams absolutely clear of the rest of the pack. And I was starting to see a top four, a big four, new four start to emerge. Newcastle, Brighton, Palace, West Ham, Villa. Maybe a big five. They're, they're definitely up there. And Everton are push it, pushing to get in there. The big one is I like is that Leeds, who we moved up to the Premier League at the start of this experiment, have just qualified for the Conference League. So that's quite cool as well. However, Man City did fail in their first season as they finished 19th and got relegated back down to the Championship. Now, in terms of the Championship, nobody went down and nobody went up. However, Chelsea... Tottenham still underperforming massively. They finished 16th and 17th. Arsenal had another bad season. In fact, Arsenal sacked their manager this year. They finished 19th, whereas Liverpool dropped down out of the playoffs and ended up finishing 13th. Man United had a good season on their return but couldn't get back up as they finished 7th. Um, some distance behind, sort of 8 points behind the, the eventual winners, which was Ipswich. So none of these teams are coming back up as we head into our final three seasons. We also had new winners of the FA Cup as Brighton captured it for the first time. Uh, so they've done a league and cup double. Pretty cool. Um, and after Newcastle's dominance of this trophy, you know, they've won it five times out of the seven seasons so far. It's pretty nice to see a new winner. And it was familiar faces in the Champions League as PSG beat Real Madrid 2-1. Those two teams have dominated Europe since we took the uh, the top six out. Surprising we haven't seen an, uh, you know, Bayern Munich get into the final yet or an AC Milan into Milan Juventus. These two just seem to be absolutely dominant. While in the Europa Conference League, we had another new winner. Marseille beat Wolfsburg in the final 2-1. And over in the Europa League, Atletico Bilbao won it 2-1 in extra time. So they won the Conference League last year and they've now captured the Europa League. So congratulations to them. After losing in the final, they've bounced back in sensational style. So we've got three seasons to go. Are we going to see any of these teams back in the Premier League? None of them are there at the moment. It's more likely that Arsenal or Chelsea could get relegated than promoted. But what's going to happen over the next three seasons? Well, let's get on with the eighth season and find out. All right, then season eight in the book. Let's have a look before we go into our last two seasons. Newcastle are champions of England yet again. Brighton finishing second. Bournemouth and Villa making up the rest of the top four. Um, Luton, West Brom and Ipswich go down. Leeds qualify for the Europa League next season. And I'll will become clear why in a second. Now, <clears throat> the other big news is that Wolves have qualified for the Conference League. 
they did finish out but look how many champions league places we have again that's five and then three Europa League places. So the coefficients are starting to grow again the more our teams are successful. But the big news in the championship is that Manchester United are back in the Premier League. They are promoted through the playoffs, finishing on 71 points, joining Blackburn and Hull going up. Blackburn dominated the league, getting 91 points, only conceding 29 goals all season. Fantastic defensive effort from them. While um, Arsenal, Tottenham, Chelsea all finished lower half of the table and Liverpool finished mid-table, Man City finishing eighth. In the FA Cup, it, it's it's almost inevitable now. I mean, it's almost like that it, it's it's bound to happen. But Newcastle have won the FA Cup again. Um, that is the sixth time in eight seasons. Um, you know, I think it's the sixth time they've won the league as well. So. Boring! It's a league and cup double. They have just dominated this competition and it was a familiar story in the Champions League as well um, Real Madrid beating PSG so we had a Real PSG final again and Real Madrid come out on top those two competitions we are seeing the same two teams the FA Cup and the Champions League in the final consistently um, which says a lot about their performance levels that they don't drip they're just not dropping off in the Europa League, uh, Juventus lost to Roma in the final. So Roma have won it for a second time during this uh, experiment. And uh, yeah, they scored a 90th minute winner after Juventus played 80 minutes with 10 men. And in the Europa Conference League, Leeds have captured European glory. So that is the third English team to capture a European trophy during this experiment after they beat Salzburg 2-1 in extra time. So they go into the Europa League next season. So again, we see Man United back in the Premier League. Now there's two seasons to go. Are we going to get any of the teams? We've only had Man City and Man United back in there. Are we going to finish this with any of them up there? It's going to be interesting to find out what happens. Uh, and can Newcastle make it eight Premier League titles and eight out of FA Cups out of 10? Can we get an English winner of the Champions League? Well, let's go on with season nine and we'll find out. All right, then the penultimate season of this is in the books. And let's have a look at who has one who's been relegated and how it finished so Newcastle have once again won the Premier League with Aston Villa Everton and Leeds getting into the top four Man United did avoid relegation by four points so they will be in the Premier League going into the final season they've not recovered anywhere near as well as you probably would expect but Newcastle on the other hand have absolutely dominated this league now in the championship Man City will join Manchester United in the Premier League for the final season of this uh, of this video now, Liverpool and Tottenham finished 18th and 19th, while Arsenal and Chelsea finally had a good season in the Championship, finishing 8th, 9th and 10th, respectively. So, a pretty good turnaround for the two Arsenal clubs, uh, whereas Liverpool and Tottenham have just dropped, dropped off a cliff, especially Liverpool, since they finished 3rd and missed out on automatic promotion on goal difference. What about the FA Cup? Well, Newcastle have once again absolutely dominated and um, have won that 2-0 by beating West Ham. ESG once again claimed the Champions League as well. They beat Napoli 2-0 in the final. While Viking FK have won the Europa Conference League, they beat Wolves 2-0 in the final of that. I never thought I'd see a team from Norway win the Europa Conference League. Um, but it, there you go. That is a fantastic result for Viking FK. And Nice won the Europa League on penalties, beating Lazio in the final. So here we are. We're heading into the last season of this Will we see a different Premier League winner? Will we see an English club lift the Champions League? Let's find out. Right then, here we are, the last season of our experiment, and we've had a different Premier League winner. Aston Villa have claimed the Premier League, and 85 points, Newcastle 81. And unfortunately, Man City and Man United were both relegated from the Premier League as well. Um, so that's that's not great, really. In the Championship, Burnley, Ipswich and Luton were promoted, while Arsenal and Chelsea finished 8th and 9th. Tottenham were 19th uh, and Liverpool were 12th. So none of those teams made it back to the Premier League. They all got stuck in the Championship. There wasn't the money there to invest and they just never got out of the, the, the kind of the middle of the pack. Chelsea and Arsenal did well to avoid relegation the first couple of years, but they never got past that point. And unfortunately, they are now going to be known as um, a, cha a mid-table championship team. Well, in the FA Cup, we had another new winner, Crystal Palace beating Wolves 3-0 in the final. Um, and that is to, that pretty much, I wouldn't say ends Newcastle's domination because they won it. I think it was, uh, they won seven FA Cups over the 10 years. Seven FA Cups and six Premier Leagues is, is pretty impressive. So, you know, you can't really fault that. 
In the Champions League, Newcastle made the final again, but again, they lost to PSG. Uh, PSG actually won the tournament five times with the most successful European side during this entire 10-year period, along with Real Madrid, who won it three times. Uh, in fact, Real Madrid won it four as well. So, you know, pretty, pretty impressive. In the Europa League, Bayer Leverkusen lost in the final on penalties to Rennes. Uh, quite nice to see Rennes get some, some success as well. Um, obviously, kind of, uh, you know, a top six French team. You don't really get them in the final that often. So it's nice to see clubs like that winning, especially after Viking won the Conference League. And the Conference League, finally, Roma won that 1-0. They beat Bournemouth in the final. It would have been nice to have Bournemouth win that, I must admit. But, uh, but yeah, unfortunately, they didn't. So there you have it. In terms of the Premier League, Newcastle became the dominant team, winning the league seven times over the last 10 years. They also were the dominant team in the FA Cup as well, winning that seven times over the last 10 years. It does show that they have the, they have the most money and could invest in the squad properly. But still, Brighton and Aston Villa did manage to upset the apple cart on a couple of occasions. PSG dominated Europe in ways that we'll probably never see them do in real life. But who knows what the next 10 years holds. I hope you've enjoyed this anyway and it's it's been it's been entertaining remember if you want this database as well please let me know and i will get make it available to download and um i'll see you on the next one hit subscribe hit the thumbs up button and let us know in the comments your thoughts see you soon